Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we have come with yet another interesting topic which has been news from past few days that is a crisis situation going on in Sudan due to a coup data that has been done by the military rulers of the or military commander of the Sudan. So let us delve deeper into the topic and also try to understand a little about the historical background of Sudan that has led to precipitation of this crisis. But before delving into or going into detail about the historical background, let us try to understand the geographical location of Sudan. So as we can see from the map here, Sudan is a North African country that is bordered by Egypt from the north, the Horn of Africa from the east, if you know, you might know, Horn of Africa is this region of Africa that looks like a horn and is made up of or we can say composed of four countries that is Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea and Djibouti. Then on the northeastern and eastern side also we can see Sudan is surrounded by a Red Sea while in the northern western region it is surrounded by a region that is called as Sahel. Sahel is actually a northern uh, African dry or we can say semi dry region or semi arid region that is actually a transitory region between savanna grasslands of the south and the Sahara Desert of the north. So that is overall geographical boundary of Sudan. Now let us try to understand about the historical background of Sudan. So history or overall history of Sudan we can divide into three major regions or three major divisions or three major chronological divisions. First is ancient, second will be medieval and third will be modern. So first of all if we try to understand that who was the ruler of Sudan during ancient times. So the first civilization that has ruled Sudan somewhere between 2500 to 1500 BC that was also contemporary of the ancient Egyptian civilization is called as Karmani kingdom or kingdom of Karma. Kingdom of Karma was actually a Nubian civilization or actually we can call it as a Nubian empire. Nubian empire is an empire that developed at that time in the river valley of Nile and was, uh, and was controlling a large territory of northern and central Sudan. After the Karmani kingdom we have, so the Karmani kingdom used to rule over the, uh, is also an example of Nubian empire which used to rule over the uh, northern and central Sudan that developed in the river valley of Nile. After the Karmani kingdom for somewhere between 1500 to 1070 BC, Sudan came under the occupation of new kingdom of Egypt or also called as Egyptian new kingdom. This kingdom was actually kingdom of Pharaohs where the most important or most significant ruler was Ramses I and it was during the ruling of Egyptian or ruler uh, this rule of Egyptian new kingdom that Sudan developed into uh, more developed more economically politically as well as culturally. However, there is an incident that happened somewhere in the end of 11th, uh, 1100 or 1070 BC that is referred by historians at late bronze age collapse. Due to this late bronze age collapse, what has happened that we have seen a significant changes or significant systemic destruction of society as well as the ruling dynasties all across North Africa, Mediterranean, the region of Levant as well as in Southeast Asia. During this collapse, it is also called as or it is also referred as Dark Ages. The reason why it is referred as Dark Ages was because most of the dynasty that is ruling these regions collapsed and that also causes a disintegration of the society. So that happened and it was due to this late bronze age collapse we can see a weakening of the Egyptian new kingdom and taking advantage of this weakening of the new Egyptian kingdom a new kingdom of Kush took control of the Sudan and ruled for somewhere between 785 BC to 385 AD. So almost for 1000 years we can say the kingdom of Kush has ruled the uh, Sudan due to uh, decline of Egyptian new kingdom. Then. Coming to medieval ages, the other significant uh, importance that has happened, important event that has happened in the medieval time period was that Arab nomads were there who started to settle in the Sudan from between somewhere between 14th to 15th century. Arab nomads actually traces their origin from the Arabian Peninsula and they are a nomadic people who are mostly engaged in herding of camels and goats or sheep, and they keep on moving from one region to another regions. So they bring or they brought along with themselves their own distinct culture, traditions and apart from that they also we can say led to flourishment or increase in the dominance of Islam all over the Sudanese empire. 
Further, somewhere between 16 to 19th century, the control of Sudan was shared between three different empires. We can see. So, it first was the Funj Empire or the Sultanate of Funj. Sultanate of Funj is also referred as the Blue Sultanate. Now, interestingly, if you try to understand that why it is referred as Blue Sultanate, because traditionally Sudanese people uh, call the people of dark complexion or dark color as a blue people. And that is why since the ruler of the Funj Sultanate or the ruling elite of the Funj Sultanate were of darker complexion, they were also called as Blue Sultanate or Funj Sultanate. So, we can see this is the Sudan. So, the eastern and northern, eastern and the central part of Sudan was controlled by the Funj Sultanate, while the northern part we can see nearby the Red Sea region was controlled at the same time by the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire was a Muslim empire or Islamic empire that flourished somewhere in the medieval century and it traces its origin, actually it originated in the Anatolia Plateau of Turkey under the rule of Muhammad Usman, who was the first ruler of Ottoman Empire. And then further from there, it has spread it all across the Mediterranean region covering Turkey, Greece, uh, Cyprus and the northern African regions. While in the east western side, it was controlled by a small dynasty that is called as Darfur dynasty or Darfur Sultanate. So, these were the three powers who shared the territory of Sudan between 16th to 19th century. Then coming to the modern era, the after the 19th century, the first control of Sudan went to a Muhammad Ali dynasty that is also called as Alawite dynasty which was actually an Egyptian dynasty. So, we can say basically in the beginning of the 19th century, Sudan again went into control of Egyptian empire. However, later on UK showed its interest and then United Kingdom actually took control of Sudan after the Arabic revolt of the local people against the Alawite dynasty. At the same time after the UK took control of Sudan, there was one more revolution that was going on in the Sudan that is called as Mahadist revolt. And however, the Mahadist revolt was however crushed by the joint or combined forces of UK and Egypt. Then let us try to understand some more significant development that has happened at that time. So, let us look at the development that happened in 1899. So, in year 1899, there was a large scale uh, problem between uh, both UK and Egypt regarding the ruler of Sudan. The both uh, countries were not able to share the power or we can say not able to demarcate their boundaries. So, that is why they agreed that it is better to have a severe shared sovereignty instead of one uh, country ruling over the whole Sudanese empire. But however, in effect, Sudan become a British position and just Egypt, Egypt, Egypt was a, a ruler on the paper. It was basically a British colony. But Somewhere in 1952, due to oppressive policies of British rule as well as oppressive policies of Egyptian uh, kingdom, there was a revolution that started in the Sudan that is called as Egyptian revolution, where the main, independent, main demand of the revolution was for independence of Sudan, both from the UK clutch or a British clutch as well as the Egyptian clutch. Now, looking at the weakening of the power uh, over Sudan, the both Egyptian and Sudanese government declared or we can say decided to declare Sudan as an independent state and that is why on the 1st of January 1956, Sudan was declared independent from both Egyptian and British clutches. Now, after the independence, we can divide the history of Sudan into three major ages. So, the post independent development, we can first look at between the time period of 1956 to 1956, 1969. So, just after independence, the first democratic government of Sudan was elected under the leadership of Ismail al-Ajhari. So, actually he removed both the UK flag and Egyptian uh, flags were removed from the main buildings of Sudan or the parliament building of Sudan and the new Sudanese flag was unfurled. However, there was widespread discontent both among the populace as well as among the other ruling factions of the Sudan and that led to in years 1969 uh, another coup that was led by Colonel Gaffer Nimeri and after he took control of the Sudan, he abolished both the parliament as well as outlawed all the political parties. At that time also there was a lot of factions in the Sudan that were fighting with each other, a lot of tribal groups were there that were fighting with each other and a kind of civil war situation broke out. However, due to mediation, a agreement was signed between two major political groups or two major rival factions and this Adis Ababa agreement led to we can say siege fire between two warring factions and a 10 year peace prevailed in the Sudan. However, the government under Cardinal Gaffer Nimeri was a pro-Western government and who wanted to, uh, we can say, increase the economic cooperation with West and Sudan 
and that is why he tried to initiate lot of reforms that was supported by international monetary fund however these reforms were not very popular and it caused a large scale increase in the inflation as well as shortage of essential food products so people become people became angry and that is why that is when taking advantage of the situation of unrest another military coup by colonel omar al basir was launched and then he took control of power from colonel gafer nimeri however Uh, colonel omar al basir was islamic traditionalist uh, we can say traditional islamist and that is why he initiated the islamic legal court over the sudan and during his reign actually there was a large scale depression or we can say operation large scale operation of the sudanese people who were having non arabic origin in terms of political front after omar al basir occupied power he put sudan under one party ruled uh, uh, one party state and it was ruled by only single party that was the national congress party also during his reign uh, the actually the um, lot of traditional islamic fundamentally like including osama bin laden was actually invited to sudan and he started building his empire there started building his base there this all situations that is support of uh, the sudan to the a traditional islamic fundamentalist or we can say jihadis actually caused the west to become very angry in sudan and united state at one point of time declared sudan as a state sponsor of terror all this caused sudan to become a international pariah so due to these all these situations on the international front as well as the worsening of economic situations especially in the domestic front a liberation movement in the name of sudan liberation movement was launched by some of the uh, protesting group or some of the rival factions of the political rival factions of omar al basir this all at the, at the same time when al basir was in power the most serious uh, situation or we can say the most important development that happened was there was a conflict that began in the south kordofan region of sudan which is located in the central part of sudan in the blue nile region of uh, from where the origin of blue nile region is there then in early 2010 due to this worsening of conflicts the both sudanese army as well as sudan revolutionary army that was the army of the uh, rival group started fighting with each other and this fighting turned into very violent conflict and the main reason why both of the uh, armies were fighting because they wanted to take control of the oil rich region of abi abi you can see on the map here it is located in the central part of sudan and it was a resource rich region oil rich region and both countries or uh, we can say both faction wanted to occupy this region so that their economic or monetary power can be increased anyway all this conflict and uh, this political development finally lead to development of a new nation that we call as a south sudan and south sudan finally separated got independent and built up as a separate nation in year 2011 then all these things were going on when the uh, omar al basir was in reign however in year 2019 some significant changes had occurred first of all there was acute shortage of foreign currency and due to this reason inflation rose by 70% at the same time again there was shortage of essential food products and people were having very difficult situations and it was very difficult for them even to take a uh, even to get uh, the, uh, get by their life within a single day or to, to get a square meal in their life and due to this there was widespread discontentment among the uh, public however government did not paid heed to this and basir wanted to triple the prices of most of the imported commodities as well as essential items and at the same time he refused totally because people were demanding since he was in power for last 30 years people had started demand that he resign and let other people come into power but bas al basir who was very adamant he refused to uh, step down from the uh, post of presidency and due to this several effects or several event happened first was that people started to protest against al basir and they actually went to take support of army where they staged a protest or sit in again near the army headquarters and wanted the army to intervene and take control of sudan back from al basir the main political group that was leading the revolution was called as forces for freedom and change so during, during, uh, during that time it was the main military leader who actually uh, this uh, uh, we can say who actually initiated another coup and took control of the uh, sudan from the al basir then forces of freedom and change and the transitional military council actually joined their hands and both of them set up a sovereignty council of sudan that has membership or we can say participation from both the civilian leaders as well as from the military leaders that was a ruling party uh, that was a ruling coalition of both civilian leaders as well as military leaders so that was going on and the and during this uh, when they 
formed the sovereignty council sudan both the civilian and military rural ha rulers have agreed that it will be a transitory rule and after that, that a democratic elections will be held somewhere uh, after the end of 21 22 months and then we'll have a full fledged democracy in the sudan however the recently some new development has happened that first of all in september 21 this sharing of power we can say transfer of power between military to civilian government was to take place in november 2021 however in september 21 the military again try to attempt another coup data or coup and however this coup was called quelled or quashed again after one month somewhere on 25th of october 2021 the sudanese military who is led by general abdul fattah al burhan he has taken control of government in a military coup and he actually dissolved the sovereignty council of sudan and imposed the state of emergency and also he has declared himself as a chairman of sovereignty council and the chair the main ruler of the sudan or we can say that currently he is the uh, main uh, decision maker of the sudan so now if we try to understand that what led people or what led this uh, military government to take control of sudan or to launch a coup so this is because of currently the whole population of sudan is split it into two different faction one is a pro military faction while another is a pro civilian government faction the people who are supporting civilian government or who are supporting military or we can say who are pro military they actually blame civilian government of having monopoly over power and civilian government has also caused worsening of economic crisis because now civilian government their main aim was that as we have discussed before during the reign of omar al basir the sudan became an international pariah as they sheltered the in fundamentalist islamic jihadist due to this the civilian government wanted to bring sudan again in the international forum and wanted to increase the cooperation with the west especially in the economic front and that is why they lo launched lot of uh, reforms especially rapid reforms that is currently being monitored by international monetary fund however these reforms become not very popular as the people felt the uh, uh, burn of these reforms as the food prices started to increase again inflation shot up by almost 400% so that caused a lot of discontentment among people and that is why they wanted to support the military so that civilian rule may end however on the other hand if you look at the people who are pro civilian government or who support the civilian government against military they believe that military has actually a significant overreach especially in the matters of foreign policy and peace negotiations they believe that the role of military should be restricted to securing the interest of the nation in the case of war external aggression or some internal significant internal disturbance however they believe that military has overreached on its power apart from that there is also several allegations of war crime severe allegations of war crime against lot of military leaders especially there was khartoum massacre that has occurred uh, when revolution was going on where lot of civilians were killed apart from that during al basir time uh this uh, the lot of military leaders are actually perpetrators of genocide crimes of genocide against non uh, we can say non arab sudanis so they believe that there should be military should not function in with a free hand there should be a oversight and restructuring in the military ranking and rapid action forces is a kind of internal force of sudan should also share power with the military however these are the demands that are completely uh, this we can say overlooked by the military and they do not want to agree to this demand so that is the reason why the military ruler right now has staged a coup and has disbanded the civilian government and most of the civilian leaders top uh, of the top most civilian leaders of the sudan has been arrested or put into uh, or has taken uh, put into detention as or has been taken into some unknown places so this has happened today and that is why there is a significant international reactions so we try to gauge the international reaction first of all the us has said that it is deeply alarmed by the early reports of military takeover and the coup is believed uh, coup uh, us uh, tells or us ex uh, says that coup is utterly unacceptable at the same time the united nations mission to sudan has also condemned the coup and has called for the immediate release of government officials at the same time the two european states of france and germany they also have condemned the coup however if you look at the stance of china so china has taken a neutral stance and he has said that the, uh, or china has said that uh, or urged for a dialogue to be started between both the factions of sudan that is civilian faction as well as the military faction military faction now we try to understand that what what is at the stake for indian government so we need to understand that what is the indian diaspora situation in sudan so first of all historically the gujarati trader it was lavchand amarchand sa who is believed to be the first indian that settled uh, who settled in sudan 
So he is actually a trader and businessman and with him other family members came and these family members bring other family members and these uh, family members bring other family members. So that is why a chain of migration actually started from uh, India to Africa after this Lavchand Amarchand Sa. And now actually it is believed it is the Beha or a Hamitic people are there who are inhabitants of Sudan who account for almost about 5% of Sudan population claim to be of Indian origin because a lot of interrelations or intermixing of uh, races has also occurred because of local people marrying Indian people, Indian people marrying local people. And the Beha language possibly related to the ancient Prakrit. And as of 2000, however, you look at the Sudanese diaspora in India. So as of 2000, there is estimated that almost 3000 Sudanese students currently study in the universities of India. So take into that into consideration, Indian government should also uh, keep an eye out on the development of situations in Sudan and its diaspora in the Sudan. About the India and Sudan relation, we will make a separate video. We will discuss in details about all the economic relations and the political relations and how both countries are cooperating in which fronts in the next or the separate video. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe.